Hey everyone, tonight I'm in the 2017 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport. This is a new offering for the US market. This particular car has the six speed manual, which uh, I've been pretty excited to drive out actually. I, I, I have a feeling that it would kind of fit in between the regular Honda Civic and the Civic Si that's gonna be coming out shortly here. Pretty sharp looking car. This, uh, this is kind of a different design for the US market. We've seen some stuff like this in Europe and the UK, but never really here in the United States. Um, I wanted to give some first impressions on this car today. I've had this for about, I don't know, about five days I've been driving it. And I was really very impressed with the last Civic that I had. It was just a regular Honda Civic sedan, automatic. Um, I was very impressed with how premium it felt. It had really nice uh, interior throughout, excellent touch points. It drove super well. Um, and it was, it was rather engaging and entertaining. But this car, I have some mixed opinions about. Um, some things I like and some things I do not like at all. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit. One thing you notice when getting in is Honda's kind of decided to simplify their interiors a little bit. You only have one dashboard readout instead of multiples going on here, which is, I think is nice. Um, yeah, let's get, let's go for a little drive here. You can only get the manual transmission in kind of the base model, so there's no leather seat option. These are cloth seats, which I don't really have a problem with. I kind of prefer cloth seats anyway. They keep you uh, held in there a little bit firmly. And honestly, with how well this car handles, uh, that is just fine, because it definitely pulls some Gs around the corners. With a proper set of tires, this car would be a, uh, a menace on track around the autocross course. This has the new 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. I believe 180 horsepower and uh, just, just, I think it's around 173 pound-feet of torque. Uh, don't quote me on that. I don't think that's the exact number, but it's around there. There's a little bit of turbo lag with this manual transmission, uh, but it's not bad. Power feels good. I'll, we'll do a few pulls up here, and you'll kind of get an idea for what acceleration is like once the car warms up a little bit. So let's get to the elephant in the room. Um, some other journalists, some other people have, I think they've been a little bit easy on this manual transmission. Um, for me, it's a huge disappointment. Honda, in my opinion, makes some of the best manuals on the market. They've always done a really good job in the Honda Accord Sport, uh, the V6, even the four cylinder, and past Civic SIs have been fantastic. They've made really good manual transmissions. The shifts are short, they're crisp, they're engaging. <laughs> this car though, you can hear it. It sounds like a it sounds like a Logitech shifter. And it feels like a Logitech Logitech shifter. I mean this it feels so cheap that it that I, I, I feel like I'm shifting in a video game at an arcade. And it's loud. This is such a quiet car that when you shift, it's kind of all you hear. And it feels, it feels about as cheap as it sounds. I'm sorry, Honda, but you've done better. If you hadn't done better, I would've been, okay, at least they're offering a manual transmission. But Honda's done so much better than this, and I know they can do better than this. And with such, I think this is a great looking car, with such a great looking car, 
and a sporty platform and a, an excellent handling platform, this is a huge letdown for me. This, this manual transmission ruins this car for me. It's kind of harsh, but it, it does. Uh, I would get the automatic. So, just let that sink in. Um, in addition to that, the clutch pedal is incredibly light. There's virtually no feel. Um, I mean, you, you don't feel a catch point. It's just, it's it's just a pedal, in name only. <laughs> Gas pedal is kind of the same. Um, down by the pedal box, the brake pedal kind of redeems itself. Uh, the brakes have really good feel and really very good bite. Um, that is one imp pretty impressive element of this car. Pedals are set up well for heel and toe, which is nice. But man, it's just it's just not satisfying to drive. Um, I'm sure you could get a short shift kit, and that might fix it. I mean, a shifter is a relatively easy thing to fix in the aftermarket. But it's something that you necessarily shouldn't have to. I mean, it's just... It, it's just it's just bad. With 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 every shift, you get something. You get this like clunky. It's not notchy. It's just kind of plasticky feeling. It's very difficult to describe. It's better just to just to listen and and, and kind of hear the sound that it makes. Ugh. Anyway, I'm gonna get off the shifter because I I I could rant about it for ages and it, it's been bothering me all week and and. Uh, it's kind of sucked all my enjoyment out of this car that otherwise is a very good platform um, I'm very very impressed with the handling on this it handles just great the engines pretty good it's got plenty of power you know it's a little bit quiet and a little bit soulless but you know that's kind of the way it is these days with these these small displacement turbocharged engines um, you know, if you want to hear it, you can get an aftermarket exhaust. If you want more power, you can get a tune. It's all there. It's all available. Um, I think this car fits in around, I don't know, 21 grand in, in US dollars. For that price, I mean, performance wise, you know, this is this is up there. I, I would say this probably has comparable performance to. Eh, it's a, it's not as it's definitely not as quick in a straight line as like a Fiesta ST. It's probably a little bit slower than the Hyundai Elantra Sport. Um, but handling is on this car is excellent. It's 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 very very good. I don't think you can fully disable stability control, uh, but you can turn off traction control with just one button here. Sometimes it's fine to shift, you know, it's, it's, certain gates are better than others. Uh, three and four is a particularly bad shift. You can just hear it. And five and six is, is pretty, pretty gnarly too. Another thing probably heard it a little bit there is there's quite a bit of rev hang with this engine this isn't new with Hondas um, it's a little it's been a little bit of a problem for a while um, you know you just you just have to give up a little bit of clutch slip between gears uh, because there is quite a bit of a delay between when you put the clutch in and the RPMs drop especially at higher revs we're just rocketing out of that corner though Cruising at about 26, 2750 at 70 miles an hour. Uh, so far, I have gotten really good gas mileage in this car. Um, you know, driving pretty aggressively, we've been on the readout, we've been getting about 29, 30 miles to the gallon. I think if you drove conservatively on a road trip, 
you wouldn't have any trouble hitting the EPA rated 39 mpg. Um, that's one advantage this one and a 1.5 liter four cylinder is it just gets great gas mileage. We don't have any real numbers to give you, uh, like actual numbers and data taken from the pump, but uh, as far as the readout goes, it seems to be pretty pretty in line with the EPA ratings. And this car isn't broken in yet. I mean, it's it's got 1,500 miles on it. You know, when when the engine loosens up a little bit more after the first oil change, stuff like that, you'll get a little bit better fuel economy. But there's a little bit of turbo lag in sixth gear, but you definitely have enough power to do some passing. Uh, I would say power is adequate. Um, it's def it definitely feels like more than 180 horsepower with the turbo. Uh, turbocharged engines kind of tend to do that anyways. They seem to inflate the, the numbers just a little bit, which is, which is good. Another thing, this car is really quiet to ride in. Um, NVH is very good. There's no rattles. It's really smooth and comfortable over bumps. Strikes a really good balance between, you know, really very excellent handling and, and pretty pretty good ride. Oof, that three four shift is rough. And I, I don't think it's this particular car either. I mean this this is low miles uh, for a press car. It's got about 1,500 miles on it. I don't think it's, it will have been beaten on that badly that like this shifter is broken. It doesn't feel broken, it just, it just feels bad. show you another example of rev hang here. Clutch in now. That gives you a pretty good example of how long it takes for the revs to drop. I do like the feel of everything. The steering wheel is a nice, uh, has a really nice soft leather. It's a definitely a, I, really, I don't really have any complaints on the interior and, and the feel of the cabin. Honda really, they took a major leap in terms of quality with this, this latest generation Civic. I think, I think they skipped uh, a couple generations as far as just overall feel and character of the car. Uh, they really did come a long way with this with this new model. Um, and they've taken a step back in terms of the manual transmission. But honestly, I haven't really, to, all right, to be perfectly honest, I, I've driven a Cord Sport, the four cylinder, the six cylinder. Those both had fantastic manual transmissions. Oh, they were so good. I mean, they were just crisp and direct and the throws weren't super short. It wasn't like an S2000, but it had just the most fantastic feel to it. And then I've driven SI, uh, Civic SIs. Those are good. I haven't driven a standard Civic with a manual. I don't think I've ever driven a standard Civic with a manual. So maybe this is the same as that, but the fact that this is a sporty version and the manual transmission is kind of exclusive to this model, it's just... It's it's a uh, it's a bummer. If you're gonna make manual transmission cars, make them good so people will enjoy them and keep buying them. Otherwise, what's the point? Anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, kind of a mixed bag on this one. I really really like the way it looks. I think this car looks fantastic. The interior is pleasing. It's not controversial. Uh, I think the exterior is where maybe there might be some controversy, but uh, I like it. I think it looks really, really good. 
Uh, and it bodes really well for the Civic Si and, and just kind of the overall design for Honda's design language going forward. These headlights look really cool. I love the DRL design that they have going. And it's such a, the thing is too is, it's such a sporty looking car. I mean, it looks fast. This almost could pass as a SI if you didn't really know what you were looking at. You've got these <laughs> center dual exhaust tips that just look great in the middle there. Really cool C-shaped lights on both sides. I mean, this is a this is a good looking car. It's got a little spoiler up top and it's just it's sleek. This red rocks. It's got all these black black and red accents with these uh diamond uh, cut wheels I mean it's it's a I think it looks great it's so sharp there's all these cool little design elements all throughout the vehicle but in terms of driving dynamics it really it, it's a little bit of a letdown especially considering how much I enjoyed the automatic last year so anyway guys I would save your pennies and buy an SI or look at the, the Hyundai Elantra Sport, which is actually really fun to drive and really good. I'd look at a Fiesta ST. Um, yeah, or just wait and save your pennies for an SI when that comes out, because that'll probably be, uh, that'll probably fix my issues with this car. I hope, I'm sure it will, with all the horsepower that it's gonna be punching. I doubt it'll rock the same transmission. Alrighty, well, hey, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care